Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible says that the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Now, you see, we, when, 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 the God, when the Holy Trinity, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the, the Godhead in eternity past counseled together, and then they said, let us make man in our image. And we are made for communion. We're made for fellowship. We are made for intimacy. We're made to be in his presence, realize his presence, flow in his presence, and be overwhelmed in his presence. Whew. Praise God on my mule. That's the God of glory, the creator God. And he says... And he says, when Adam, when, when Eve was deceived and Adam willfully transgressed, you read it yourself, God come looking. And he says, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? You know, that's a question we need to ask ourselves every day. Now, not to the to the point of mor morbidity, yeah, mor to not be morbid about it, morbidity, that's the word. You know, because you can be so introspective, you become useless. But where am I? Where am I? Where are you? The Lord yearns. For that closeness and that intimacy. I mean, you see, everything about our, our humanity is created in his image. You see, that's why in the, in the blessedness of holy matrimony, the intimacy, the sharing, the, 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 the communication, the, uh, the, the affection, the, lo ev the love, the, everything about holy matrimony is predicated on who God is. Yesterday, uh, Luke and I went down to the Washington Nationals game, and, and Rob came up from uh, Yorktown, and, and uh, it was just good to fellowship. You know, he's going overseas next month, and over where they're shooting at each other, and, you know, and, and uh, it's just... Uh, I want to know where he is because I'm his dad. Do you understand? That's our father. Now, don't base everything you think about God based on your human father because your human father didn't get it all right just like mine didn't, and I haven't. But he always gets it right. He always gets it right. Adam, where are you? Where's the old King James, where art thou? <laughs> where are you? Because it's about intimacy, fellowship, communion, loving, interacting, blessing, the all the wonderful things of God, who he is, and is for me, and it's for you. And that's what this symbolizes. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before the crucifixion. And <coughs> I'm going to need another. <coughs> another. Um, uh, it's in Mark chapter 12, 14. 1432. Jesus in the garden, and he came to the place called Gethsemane. I've been right there. My goodness. Thousand, two thousand year old olive trees are still there. 
2,500 year old olive trees right there. And we walked through there and wondered, well, where was it? Jesus knelt. I just walked, as, I walked all over because I wanted, just like when we went to Capernaum and walked through the synagogue, I wanted to step over every, every, every inch of floor space because I know my Jesus walked there. There's something about intimacy. Raspberry, I love it. <clears throat> or as Jamie Rago would say, raspberry. And he came to the place that was, which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. At least he said, take a seat. And then he took three more, Peter, James, and John, with him a little bit farther. Say inner circle. I want to be a part of the inner circle. How about you? And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Now, this is God wrapped in human flesh. Isn't that something? Oh, I never thought Jesus got shook up about anything. Well, you need to read your Bible a little more. And, it, and then he said, now, Jesus, yes, I know he said all his divine attributes aside and didn't operate in those. He operated as a man and, and, and as a spirit-filled man, operating in the operation of the Holy Spirit and then he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Now, if you'll just ponder a little bit that God being sorrowful, that God in the flesh being sorrowful. And the Bible says that this sorrow, even right there in that place, was even unto death. He could have died right there. Now, of course, the devil had been happy about that. Kill him. Die. Oh, just. And he went a little farther. And, and he fell on the ground. And he prayed. And, and he said this. Now, 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 you know, listen to this. He said this to his father. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Aren't you glad that's true? Abba, Father. Abba is Aramaic and Hebrew. I mean, we would say dad or daddy. Dad, all things are possible for you. That's how I looked at my dad when I was a, a boy. Dad, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Now, Jesus, the sinless one, who lived a perfect life, fulfilled the righteous demands of God, the Mosaic law, the holy law of God that he gave his servant Moses upon the mount. That was at Pentecost, by the way. Isn't that neat? And he says, I, am, I have fulfilled everything to date. Now, I know everything's possible for you. But this fact of me becoming sin, the fact of God incarnate being made to be sin was beyond, oh, Father, take this cup from me. Take this cup from me. 
He knew what was going to come. The torture, the beatings, the humiliation, the shame, the blasphemy, all of that. The nailing to the cross, the anguish, and all the sin of the whole world poured upon him. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, the Scripture says, that we may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus the Lord. And he said, nevertheless, have you ever had no situations where, now, you know this is what God wants, and, and, and you, you're walking that way, and the more you walk that way, you say, you know, Don or Gary could do this. You know, Jeff or Chris, you know, they could do this. I'm going to call them and tell them to do this. It's fun being the boss. But God told me to do it. Do you understand? And what I'm supposed to do, I don't have the right or the privilege to put on someone else. And he said, nevertheless, not what I want, not my, what I will, but what you will. Wow. Now, why? And he said, eh, he, now, why did he say that? What brought him to this place where holy God wrapped in humanity is saying, okay, I'll walk through this door. I'll do this thing. I'll be an obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It goes back to Adam. Where are you? It's intimacy, it's fellowship. It's, it's that the Spirit of God entwining with your spirit and you hearing from heaven. You, you read the Word. You spend time in prayer. You, 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 you come and you worship and you bring your tithe and, you, and give up your offering. You sing praise. You do all those things. You go out and you're a light in a dark world and, and you reach out to those. And, and I don't, you, because Jesus died for everybody. Everybody, regardless of how they look or what they've done to themselves, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for them, all of them. And it goes back to this fundamental thing. I mean, everything is predicated on this thing. Everything. Listen, I want, you, I want everybody to be filled with the Spirit and operate in the gifts. I want everybody to bear the fruit of the Spirit. I want all that to happen and be real. And you experience that in your life. But it all goes back to this fundamental, primary, prime idea. Where are you? Where are you? And of course, you've got to Know him by faith. And real faith. You know what real faith will do? It'll walk. Uh -huh. Real faith will walk. Real faith will do. You see, real faith, saving faith. It, it'll come through. There's no secret agent Christians in the kingdom. If you've really been saved, bless God, you'll really show it. And so, it all comes back to, where are you? Where are you? And I ask you today, where are you? Are you saved? Praise God. Well, then what are you doing about it? I mean, what are you doing? 
I mean, do you ever think to come to tag on Sunday night? Just once a month. Do you ever, does it ever cross your mind? Or, or to come to the intercessory prayer time on Thursday. Does it ever cross your mind? Do you, I mean, does it ever, do, does it ever, you know, you know, I think I could buy one of those Jeopardy tickets. Family feud. I don't watch Family Feud. I watch Jeopardy. Uh, family, f family Feud tickets. It's all the same to me. You got to look over me. I'm too short to look under. You know? What's $5 to help some teens go out and do ministry and let God touch their lives? What's $5 to you? You're going to blow probably 10 times that at lunch if you go out. If you take you and sweetie babe. And if you got Junior and Bubby, look out. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, it's so easy to consume on ourselves. You know, we, we, we got a wedding to attend this afternoon, and I looked at my car and I thought, my goodness. Boy, look at all the filth on this thing. You can tell I've been down to D.C. <laughs> Nah, that was a joke. <clears throat> Luke told me D.C. stands for District of Criminals. I said, son, you're, you're close. <laughs> okay, get out of that hole. Here's my shovel. Well, they say it's going to get hot today. <clears throat> uh -huh. We're going to a wedding. Yeah. Oh, the car was dirty. That was it. The car was dirty. And I looked and I said, well, you know, I had time to run over here to the valley car wash real quick on, on Fairfax Pike, you know. And do a little, let, let the machine wash my car. And I went up there and I thought, well, now what? I don't go to that very often. And I think, and I'm looking at this and I was in the wrong line and this other line was longer that had the, the rub a dub. And I, and I was in the short line that just done the squirt, squirt. And I think, well, I want to get this sucker clean. I want it to shine and sparkle. I don't want it to look like it looks right now. And I looked at all the. The, the prices, and I thought, ooh, man, the Super Deluxe was $14. I said, well, as long as Chrissy don't find out. <laughs> and I put my plastic money in there, and it pulled up, and, you know, and all of a sudden, and then it hit me. Oh, man, I cried while the, wash, while the thing washed my car. The average Cuban don't make that in a month's time. My God, he's so good to me. He's so good to America. He's so good to us. And he keeps speaking out to the 300 and however many, 25 million people that are in America today. Where are you? I've raised you up for such a time as this. I have blessed you. You, you are the most financially blessed generation in the history of mankind. Where are you? And what are you doing? And he calls us to communion. He calls us to loving service, to obedience, to, to surrender, to it doesn't mean you can't go on a picnic or, a, or you can't go enjoy your family. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just, it just, it's just a call to say, look at who you are and how I've blessed you because everything you have came from me. And I'm not jealous or begrudge anybody how much of whatever it is you got that you got, that you have. 
but just look at your life and look, just take a look at your financial statement and see where it's all going and how much is it on you and how much of it is in the kingdom. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I believe God wants to do so much more f through Greenway, Spirit and Word and Fellowship than he's doing. And if more people will be honest with God and get him with both feet from the crown of your head to your billfold to the soles of your feet, sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. And he says, Adam, where are you? And Jesus says, if there's another way, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Amen. And then 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17. We don't usually talk about this much, but let's look at it real quick. He says, and, and Paul's talking to the church at Corinth, and he's talking about this right here. And he says, now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Can I tell you anything short of unity is sin? Doesn't mean that you need to agree 100% on everything, you know? I don't even agree with me all the time. You know, if you agree with somebody 100% of the time, one of, one of the two of you is unnecessary. That was free for somebody. He says, I hear the divisions among you, and in part I believe it. Divisions are not good unless you're an army and you're in unity. <laughs> Move ahead. You'll figure it out later. Factions among you. And those who are approved may be recognized among you. He says, therefore, when you come together in one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. And, and, he, and, he, and Paul's saying, bend over because I'm going to kick it real hard, spiritually speaking. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of the others. All here, no, no, you can't have this. And, of course, they're talking about this thing that... In the early church, they'd have what that was called a love feast before the communion. And it, and, it, and it grew into some elaborate, well, here, now, let's put our meatloaf over here, and y'all can't have none of that. Oh, no, 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 we brought, we brought, this, we brought this country ham, and it's just for us. Do you hear me? And he says... For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of the others, and one's hungry and another's. Oh, you didn't bring nothing? Well, bless your heart, but it's not going to reach all the way to my plate. Verse 22, he says, Do you not have houses to eat and drink in, or do you despise the church of God? They're turning the church of God into a social club. That's a dangerous thing. I think you ought to use the church house, but it, ought, it has to be ministry connected. See, our purpose is to reach out to the lost and to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he says, uh, shall I praise you in this? I don't praise you. Verse 23, and here we get down to it. He says, for what I've received from the Lord. Whew. Boy, when you receive it from the Lord, there's no higher authority, is there? He says, which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night he was betrayed, he took bread and, and, and he gave thanks for it. Thank you. And he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance. Remember it. Say remembrance. Rem this is a memorial service. The bread does not literally become the body, and the, the wine does not literally become the blood. It's a remembrance. He says, St. Mary took the cup uh, after, they, after they ate, after supper, and this cup is the new covenant. Say new covenant. We are a new covenant people. Our foundation is Judaism, the old covenant. 
And Jesus fulfilled the righteous demands of the law. The ceremonial law absolutely has passed away. But the moral law still is there and in place. And Christianity is the fulfillment of, of Old Testament Judaism. Do you hear me? Nothing wrong with acknowledging and learning the, the feast of the Old Covenant. Nothing wrong with that. But friends, they need to dovetail right to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Go to verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now, now, what does that mean? Listen, this table is for saved people. That's the limitation. It's for saved people. I know there's churches and denominations that bring up little children who don't know nothing about nothing. Listen, they're already, they're safe until they reach the age of accountability. But this table is for Christians, people who have been born again, and, and it's not for some adult that's too proudful or too arrogant or too sly and cunning to really get saved. It's not for you either. Because I'm telling you, you're asking the Lord to hit you right on the end of the nose, spiritually speaking. I'm telling you, this is something every believer is commanded to do. We're commanded to do this. And then he says, okay, here's what we do. Let, let's examine ourselves, and then eat. He didn't say examine ourselves and say, well, uh, things are pretty bad. I'm not going to. No, he said examine and eat. You see, it's not one or the other. It's both. Examine yourself and eat. For if you, if you, if you eat and drink in an unworthy manner, you know, Okay, you examine yourself. Oh, what's this in my life? Confess it. Talk to him about it. Give it to him. Yeah, they, they, they lied about you. They said hurtful things about you. They were mean to you. They, who, whatever they did to you, let it go. Because what they done wrong to you... Don't let that keep you from God's best in your life. Let it go. They're the, don't let them continue to keep you in bondage. Let it go. And the Bible says, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. He says, if we'll judge ourselves, we'll not be judged. Listen, there's healing here. There, there, is, there is the blessings of the Lord. There's, a, there's just a wonderful mysterious presence of the Spirit of God when we approach this in a way that brings glory to Him. We examine ourselves. We, 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 uh, uh, it says, um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, go to verse 33. He says, therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Listen, it's not big I, little you. Well, I'm coming up first because I'm a tither. Well, I'm coming for you because my tithe's bigger than yours. Well, I'm coming for you because I've been in this church longer. Well, I'm coming for you because I'm prettier. Well, I'm coming for you because I'm more educated than you. Well, I'm coming for you because my truck's bigger. Well, I'm coming for you because I can whoop yourself. Isn't that ridiculous? Listen, there's only one big eye, and that's his name's Jesus. He says, if you're hungry, eat at the house. This is not to fill your belly. This is to worship the Lord and remember him. So there's three looks. We look back to the cross. We look in, word. And then 
we look forward to when he comes a second time. Because he says, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink this cup again until I drink it new in my kingdom.